Let's do this, y'all. All right. I have got like a hundred and something questions from you guys. I think like 160, 170. It's a lot. I'm gonna try and answer them all. So I'm gonna go real fast. This is gonna be like rapid fire. See if we can bang all these out. So let's get to it. You guys asked on both Instagram and YouTube, tons of killer questions. I'm stoked to answer them. So boom, getting started. Luke on YouTube said, Dinkies, Sandbar and Grill or Hatter's Soul? I'm gonna have to go with Hatter's Soul. That place has been my wife and I's favorite place to go celebrate special occasions for dinner. They have great food, epic location. If you haven't been there, they're down there in Hatter's Village, right at Teacher's Lair Marina. Check them out. Luke also asked, how did Barley Lane become Barley Lane? It's a good question. Long story short, back in the 70s when my uncle and dad moved here, they bought all this land up from the guy that lives at the end of the road. When they built their house, there was no road. They had to carry all the wood through the trees to build the house. Once the house was built, they put the road in, they sold up, off portions of the land to other people, and then eventually the road needed a name. Someone down the road kept putting up signs and then they finally were like, you know what? We claim this place first. And they put the sign up there and it's been there since. Old Pine Log Boards asked, what's your favorite coffee bean? For me, Narwhal Coffee Company's Dark Roast. Oh my gosh, so smooth, so rich, so good. You will not have better coffee. Liam Burke. What's up, Brett? My question is, would you ever come down to Florida to surf? Well, Liam, I would love to. It's pretty far, 12 hour drive at least, if not further, depending where you go. But I've always wanted to come down and surf South Beach, Miami. One of these days I'm gonna get there. Really bummed I missed it this winter when it was pumping. But uh, yeah, hopefully get there one of these days. And yeah, maybe see you in the water. Josiah Knapp asks, when all this blows over, what do you think about coming to Costa Rica? Well, who knows what's gonna happen when all this blows over, especially financially speaking. But obviously, you know, someday I hope to keep traveling and Costa Rica is definitely on my list of places to go back to. Boston said, I just got fined for surfing when the beach was closed. Waves were firing though, so all was worth it? Would you take the risk? Um, I've been thinking about this a lot lately. And in all honesty, if it's the law and it's completely forbidden and you're gonna get fined and ticketed, you know, you don't wanna be messing with finances right now. So it's not really worth it. it it's okay to just like take a break and do some other stuff. It, it is wrong that surfing is being criminalized across the globe, especially because breathing the salt air is good for your lungs, getting that vitamin D. I mean, all these things to keep you healthy, exercise, and sitting inside in a Petri dish and you know putting on weight and getting unfit and yeah, all that stuff is gonna just make you more immune compromised if you were to get sick. So yeah, long story short, I would probably just stay out of the water, as sad as that would be. Antonio Clazo says, who was your favorite surfer when you were growing up? What have you learned from him, if anything? Well, I've debated this quite a bit because I had about five favorites, but my all time favorite would probably be Corey Lopez, which is really funny to say because we're friends now. Um, Corey, if you're watching this, don't let that go to your head. Uh, <laughs> the, his raw power in surfing and the way he rode waves was something that I always looked up to, especially waves like Chopu and Pipeline and the box. I loved watching him ride his backhand on the box. I mean, he was just my childhood hero, kind of as far as surfing goes. And now that we're friends, I've learned quite a lot from him, especially in the last like six years as we've gotten closer. He's taught me a lot of things and I'm very thankful. I can't think of anything specific, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for our relationship and the part he's played in my career. Rue Vidic, how do you exit on big waves upon a wipeout or closeout section? Any cheat or neat techniques? Uh, it just depends. If you're going faster, you don't wanna jump feet first because then you'll flip. Uh, if you're going slower, going feet first helps. And if you straighten out, you wanna ride it out as long as you can before you jump off. So the sooner you jump off, the more pounded you get. And if it's a closeout barrel section, I like to, if, and I'm going fast, I like to kind of dive and body surf to ride out until the wave like gets more white water and less lip. I guess those are my tips and techniques. I don't know, it, it's different depending on where you are on the wave, the speed you're going, how big it is, how hollow, it all depends. Chris Raby wants to know, you get any better at doing twin fin turns? <laughs> I was watching a video of you surfing a twin fin and you were saying when you draw out your turns, it feels dumb. 
Well, what I was saying was you need to draw your turns out, but I'm so used to the thruster that it just feels like I'm like the turn is weak. It feels like it looks bad uh, because I'm not going as fast and on rail as hard. But then when I watched the videos, I realized that it looked normal. So uh, I haven't gotten any better at it. I'm still learning the twin fin, but uh, yeah, figuring it out. It's pretty fun. James Wald says, hey bud, with all that's happening, how are you and your crew? I would say, honestly, we're all being pretty positive and doing well. The majority of the guys here are still working based off the businesses they work for, um, as far as carpentry and stuff. And we're getting to surf because the beaches aren't closed. So it hasn't gone like too negative here yet. And the hope is that we keep encouraging each other and everything so that it doesn't go that way. And also, what's the best path to truly become sponsored or get the gear I need if I can't afford wetsuits or family desperately needs? The path to getting sponsored is so much different now than when I was younger, so it's hard to say. And honestly, in this market, the way this whole virus is affecting things, you might as well not think about it for now because no companies are gonna be picking anyone up. But the, the wants versus needs for wetsuit gear, that's what you really gotta look at. If you can't financially buy it, then you shouldn't, you should save your money. Um, but if you can save up and invest into a suit that's gonna last and you take care of it, that's your best bet. Whereas if you spend you know, a certain amount on used suits and then they're bad by the next year, that's not really a wise investment. So pick a good suit, one of O'Neill's Psychotechs or Hyperfreaks that's gonna last and wash it, rinse it, take care of it. You'll be good to go. Waves Hunter on Instagram said, do you some plugin for editing your videos? I think he's asking, do you use some plugins for editing? I don't use any plugins, I don't use any LUTs. I mean, I guess plugins technically, yes. Um, long, anyway, that's super in depth. But no, I don't use any LUTs. I don't use anything that makes the editing process like simplified because someone else made it. Uh, other than titles, I did buy a title pack from Maddie Hapoya and that's what I use for all my vlogs. I like to keep it simple. I color correct all my own stuff. I edit every clip individually, whether GoPro footage or drone footage or anything and I just like to have a full hands-on approach to the whole process. Jackson 9117 said, when was the first time you can remember surfing? I honestly can't. I mean, I, I've been immersed in it since I was in diapers at boogie boarding and, and surfing on like boogie boards and soft tops. Uh, my, I got my first surfboard when I was five, but I don't remember the first time I surfed, honestly. It's kind of weird. I don't have that memory of like my first wave. The Nathan Varel said, do you ever get scared alone out in the lineup? Uh, I would say yes, but mostly in situations where it's real fishy um, or getting dark and it's bigger or something like that. For the most part though, I surf alone a lot and I'm kind of used to that aspect and it doesn't really, you know, freak me out so much. Shreddy Eddie 52 says, what's your favorite trick? I would honestly say currently my favorite trick is a backflip because I haven't landed one yet and I don't really want to. Eggnog Surfboards asked if he can have some size nine booties. Uh, unfortunately, I can't give any to you, but I would recommend the Psychotech boots because I've been using those from three mil to five mil to seven mil. They're so perfect, so comfortable, really warm. Good pair. Ogum Jimmy or OG Um Jimmy? I don't know. Have you ever surfed in Costa Rica? And if so, where would you recommend post COVID-19? I have surfed in Costa Rica. Costa Rica was the first place I took a surf trip when I was 12. And I can't really recommend anywhere for the sake of not wanting to blow out anyone's spots, but a simple Google search and some YouTube videos will help you find out that there's some pretty good waves and they're, you know, there's one really good long left point there. <laughs> RBC Gap said, what should the person like me who surfs basically one week a year do to better my surfing? That's pretty tough. I really have no idea other than I would suggest immersing yourself in some sort of board sport. If you live in the mountains, snowboarding, if you don't, skateboarding or riding a ripstick or a rip surf, surf, as silly as that sounds, just something that puts you on a board and increases your balance. And then that way, when you hop on a surfboard, uh, you know, it won't feel so foreign. But nothing is going to be able to replace repetition and being learning how to read waves. So unfortunately, just because of your situation, it's, it's going to be tough. But you got it. Keep at it. JRips412 says, have you ever been to New Jersey? Oh, yeah, I've been to Jersey. Went a bunch when I was younger for contests. And then most, well, it wasn't recently, it was two years ago. I was there for the winter storm Riley Swell at Numibia and some of the most perfect waves I've had. My longest barrel of, of my life on the East Coast, 15 seconds happened there. So Jersey still holds that one. It beats the lighthouse, which kind of hurts my feelings. <laughs> Finn in six asked, how cold's the water in the summer? 
not cold at all. The water in the summer is like 75 to up to 83 degrees Fahrenheit. So you're in board shorts and you're cruising. There are times it can get down into like short arm temperature, but that's super rare. Uh, at least for the southern, for Hatteras, Buxton area. Now, Rodanthe up to Nags Head, the water can get cold due to upwelling. So if you're traveling here, bring everything from board shorts to a short arm. Alex Hayes 16 asked, is Hatteras one of the best East Coast winter spots? I mean, in my completely biased opinion, I would say yes. <laughs> but it's a very biased opinion. <laughs> Matthew Ryan Holman, first board you ever owned. It was a thruster natural art surfboard that my cousin had and handed down to me when I was five years old. Yeah, we got rid of it. I wish I still had it. That would be pretty rad. Well, uh, Alex, uh, I don't know how to say the whole name. We'll just say Alex wants to know who would have won Wave of the Winter according to your criteria. I'd say Koa or Jamie, couldn't argue with either. You know, Jamie winning is super legit. If Koa won, I would have backed that too. His wave was definitely bigger and crazier, but I think Jamie's was deeper, so. Big Benny wants to know, favorite MCU character? Nah, I gotta on be honest, I had to look up MCU, Marvel Comic Universal or something. And uh, I gotta say I'm more of a DC Comics guy. Batman all the way. Eberham4 asked, on what date will the first Oregon Inlet, Hatteras Inlet, Cobia be spotted this year? Well, who knows since people might not be fishing due to this virus, but uh, I would guess the last 10 days of April. That's typically when they start showing up. He also wanted to know of all your surfing experiences, what's the one moment that stands out the most? I would say probably 2017 when I scored Namibia with Oliver Kurtz and Corey Lopez and Travis Kuhlman from Surfline was uh, documenting it. Being able to go there with two good friends, especially Corey, who I looked up to since I was little and who also like put Namibia on the map and scoring one of the best swells in a couple years. That's like kind of the pinnacle of, of surf trips I've ever done. And you when you found, I Reese Isaac wants to know thoughts on doing contests growing up. Honestly, it's hard to say. It depends on what your goal is. You just want to have fun. The families I met and the friends I made through the ESA when I was younger, I still keep in touch with quite a few of them. But if you're wanting to make surfing a career, then competition, you want to at least get started in and immerse to see where you stand. All right, we got a bunch of questions from Marty McFly. <laughs> Do you think the virus is a part of the NWO's plan to reset humanity? That's, no, not even, no. Who has the gnarliest looking surf style of all time? Andy Irons, no doubt. No one attacked a wave from two foot to 20 foot like Andy did. Have you ever surfed in Washington state? No, I have not. I got really close. I was in Oregon on a road trip once, but I flew out before they went up to Washington and I missed out on that part of the country, but I'd love to make it someday and check it out. Trump or Biden? Nope, not gonna get political. COVID-19, a conspiracy or not? Man, Marty is just in with all these crazy ones. Uh, it's not a conspiracy, it's a real virus, killing real people and it's really a problem. Uh, I won't argue that there might be something going on behind the scenes. Definitely makes you wonder as all these things shut down, but uh, that's, uh, that's a long rabbit hole. We're not going down right now. Cole Houston asked, how many GoPros have you ever bought? None. Started it out by borrowing a friend's camera, shooting some, st oh, I take that back. I bought one. I bought the Hero One. But after that, I borrowed a friend's camera, shot some stuff, sold it to GoPro. They paid me with the camera. I've bought accessories and batteries, but since then we've had a relationship and they've sent me cameras to use. But I, I only get one of each uh, model. Rich Holder asked, have you ever been to New Zealand and where did you surf? I have not been to New Zealand. I would love to go someday. My, that's on my wife's bucket list. Looks like a beautiful place and some super fun waves. Stoked Pop says, do you eat orange blossom uglies pre-surf session? I got nothing against eating donuts before I surf. I did it many a times growing up and I would still do it. But Orange Blossom is so packed every morning that I don't even bother going there. D-Lib asked, favorite place to grab a drink? I don't ever go anywhere to grab a drink, 
but at Bro's Sandwich Shack, they got really good sweet tea up there in Avon. Kirk Casper wants to know, how'd you get fishing sponsorships? Honestly, it came mostly through my social channels and the following I had through surfing and buying gear from companies and shooting product of it and making those connections and reaching out. And yeah, I kind of just organically grew. It wasn't like I, you know, sent out a bunch of emails reaching out to people. It was just something I love fishing and, and I love shooting fishing and it just uh, transitioned. Daniel J. Welsh asked, what's the best way to scope out new surf spots? Swells here are hard to predict where we'll be good. Um, just putting in the time. Honestly, you gotta learn the area, learn what winds and tides and angles affect certain breaks, certain sandbars. And uh, if you don't know, it, it takes a lot of driving around. And even when you do know, it's if it's all sandbars, it's gonna change the next week anyway. Kai Westcote asked, what wave do you like more, the first or pipeline? I'm gonna have to go with the first jetty. It's my home break. If it's firing and pipes firing, I, I don't feel weird about missing pipeline, but I do feel weird about missing the lighthouse. That's not okay. <laughs> So getting a good wave at the lighthouse feels just as good as getting a good wave at the pipeline to me. Get Lost Picks asks, have you ever surfed in Portugal? I have, I went there when I was 18 for a QS contest with Nat Young, Dylan Perillo, uh, Oliver Kurtz, and I think Brent Riley. And yeah, made it to the round of 48 and had a good time. Never went back though, but I would definitely love to. Greg Kabosh, Kaboch. Could I do a video about what I eat on a daily basis? It's kind of hard to say. I don't have necessarily a routine, but I have been th thinking about doing a video on what my family and I are doing to stay healthy right now and what we do throughout the whole winter in general. And yeah, maybe I'll share that with you guys sometime soon. Noah, I'm just gonna say Noah, how do you always happen to surf the best spots every swell? Well, no, it takes a lot of effort and I don't always. Sometimes I finish the day and I see where other people surf and I'm like, oh, they made a better call than I did. And that happens. But I put a lot of effort into the spots I do pick and make sure I pick the right ones. Like I, I don't wanna just paddle out somewhere because it's okay. I wanna find the spots that are the best. So it takes a lot of time. Bruh, ice. <laughs> When is the 2020 board quiver coming? Hopefully soon, Bryce, hopefully this spring. I wanted to do one at the beginning of this year, but things have just been busy and I hadn't gotten to it yet, but it is in the works. Bryce also asked her, do you ever think there will be another swell like the swell of the decade? Not sure what swell you're talking about specifically, but being that swells come and go, most likely there will. Who knows when though? Matthew Kirst, did you grow up in the OBX area? I did. I live here in Buxton. I live on the same street that I grew up on. Literally grew up in the house next door to here. Very fortunate to be able to say that. Florida backcountry fishing. Hey, come fish Florida. Well, I was supposed to be there this week or last week, one of these last weeks, I was supposed to be in Florida fishing. I was so pumped. COVID-19 popped up and threw a wrench in those plans. Uh, Jeff C556 said, weren't you really sick for like a couple weeks this winter? Hmm. Hmm. No, I wasn't. I was really sick in the fall, August into September. I had a crazy sinus infection. I was sick for like six weeks. It was painful. Victor wants to know, what do you eat, drink in order to maintain energy through a surf session? Lots of water, cliff bars, epic bars, which are like beef jerky kind of, I, I get the chicken ones, and beef sticks. And I mix those up for tons of protein and carbs and sugars and yeah, but a lot of water. And in stoke, the better the waves are, the easier I can stay out. I Durham 001 said, how did you prevent getting your body jammed at the lip when turning backside? In all honesty, my backside turns could use some work. So I'm probably not the one to tell you, but if you find someone that can, let me know. All right, back to some YouTube comments. Glenn wants to know, favorite Chick-fil-A combo? Spicy chicken deluxe, baby. That's my favorite. With uh, a sweet tea or a chocolate milkshake and some fries. Also I might throw in an eight count nuggets. But the spicy chicken deluxe is always the sandwich I get. Jason Ellis wanted to know, do you ever go up north and surf Kitty Hawk, Nags Head, or Sandbridge? Nope. Last time I surfed on the north side of the Oregon Inlet Bridge was, I think, 2014. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Water Life, who's sponsoring you? Whew. Kind of a long list. Let's just uh, throw them all up right here. All right, you get the gist. <laughs> Those are all the people that support me, and I couldn't be more thankful for them hanging in there with me. DD Sat, DD, whatever, DD S. As a Southern gentleman, would you say that airs feel better in a bolo tie or a 10 gallon hat? For sure, 10 gallon hat. 
I've never really understood the bolo tie thing, but 10 gallon hats are pretty sick. What up, Tori Meister? Abby, if the OB beach is closed, where will you be surfing? Nowhere, beaches will be closed. I'll go fishing. I'd, I'd really, luckily I live in this rural area where I don't see them closing. They would have to literally close like the whole island and you can't walk outside your home for those things to happen. I mean, people still need exercise. So here's to hoping none of that closes. Jonathan wants to know what's your favorite surfing film, movie or documentary? Maybe, I think Blue Horizon, the video that compared Andy Irons and uh, Dave Rostovich and just took little insights into both of their lives and how they're different and how they're similar. and. Yeah, that was pretty rad. Old school movie by Jack McCoy. Check it out. Josh wants to know, which pull-offs on Route 12 do you go if the waves aren't good at the layhouse? Sorry, Josh, that's classified. Ricky wants to know, which soccer team do I support? I mean, none. But if we're talking Olympics, then USA, obviously. Tara Swell Wave Rider wants to know, when am I gonna go surf Nazare? I mean, I'll never go surfing when it's big, but I would like to go surf it sometime when it's like double overhead plus because it looks like a barrel's pretty good. Not sure when though. Negrotsky. Dude, when am I coming to Taiwan? I don't know. Taiwan sounds pretty cool to check out and go surf though, but uh, no plans in the current future. Brian wants to know what super brand board is good for a heavy back footed surfer. Hmm, I'm a pretty front footed surfer. I don't know what would be good for back footed surfing. But regardless, for barrel riding, the Pig Dog Pro is where you need to be. Or the fling in the summertime. I'm not really sure where to point you in between though, cause I'm not, I'm just, sorry. I'm not really that much help with that one. <laughs> we have a similar question from both Antonio Colazzo, Ruta Silveria, and Zach Shellhammer. They're all asking, how do I balance family and the sport? Do I do something else for a living? What's it like living in such a small place as a surfer, YouTuber? It's a lot of late nights. There's a lot of late nights where we put the kids to bed and I work till 10.30, 11.30, sometimes 1.30 or 2 a.m. That way I can take advantage of hanging out with them during the day. And I dedicate, you know, a few days, at least like Monday through Thursday for, for computer work and, and banging out edits. And when there's waves in between, that gets harder. But you know, if it's like kind of one swell a week, I'll, I'll surf the one or two day swell. I'll edit for three days, maybe four days. And then, you know, I always try and take off the weekends, Saturday and Sunday and spend with the family, but sometimes that doesn't happen. Ruta said, people don't get you wrong about it, right? As far as being in a small place and working as a surfer, YouTuber. Uh, I mean, definitely, you know, it probably looks a lot more magical and whatnot than it actually is. You don't see all the hours behind the computer, all the hours filming things and chasing waves and not finding waves and chasing waves, but I love doing it. So it doesn't matter how hard something is. If you love doing it, that makes it a lot easier. And it makes all that like extra effort you have to put into it totally worth it. But there definitely are times where my family suffers because I'm busy or caught up in stuff or traveling. It's just all about finding balance and that's different for everyone in every situation. And uh, yeah, we go through seasons where it's better and I see them more and we go through seasons where it's harder and I'm just grinding out content and I don't see them as much. But yeah, well, I always break for dinner and hang out with them pretty much every evening and uh, try and take the weekends off. Those are my main things I focus on and then work at night so that I can spend more time in the day with them. Team Strider said, what wetsuit do you wear in the winter and size? I have a hard time with fit. I'm extra small. Uh, I wear the Psychotech 5.4 from O'Neill. I mean, they have a size chart on their site. I would suggest checking it out. I'm not the one to, to ask, honestly. OVX Surfer said, how can you practice surfing out of the water? And what is the biggest fish I've ever caught? The biggest fish I ever caught was like a 450 to 500 pound blue marlin off the whatever fishing boat that my friend Freddie James runs and yeah. Two days before that, I caught a 400 pounder. So it was a hot bite. He had me come out there to help him. Like I was the one reeling in and he had someone mating cause he just wanted to go fishing. He was driving the boat and that's what he loves doing. Um, so yeah, it was a special couple days. And how do I practice? How do, can you practice surfing out of the water? Like I told someone earlier, just board sports. If there's any kind of board sports you can do at, near home, do those and then when you go surfing, you'll be more prepared. Richard wants to know, snook and tuna are his picks, but what's my salty preference? Mm. Probably cobia. 
I think cobia is like one of my favorite fish to catch and eat. Lost ballads. When it comes to the world of big wave surfing, have you ever considered chasing huge swells and 60 foot faces? There was a time in my career where I did, but as I got older and phased out of that, I just focused on places that barrel and I don't train for those big waves, so I make the responsible choice to not put myself in them. Scott wants to know what type of merchandise was I planning on putting out in the time frame? Well, that's kind of take hit a screeching halt with this whole COVID-19 thing. So unfortunately, don't see it coming anytime soon. I was hoping to do t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, uh, stickers, and yeah, you know, go from there. But for now, we're gonna have to just put that on the back burner, unfortunately, but someday. Peyton wants to know what my thoughts are on surfing in Florida. Do I like it? Do I hate it? You know, I, I don't have anything against Florida. I don't really have anything for Florida as far as surfing goes other than like New Smyrna Beach is probably as consistent as Hatter's Island, not as big as often, but as far as days of surfable waves, it's pretty rad that a place like Florida has a wave that's that consistent. Road said, my question for you is about a video you called The Point, just wondering where it is and when it's on. Well, The Point is here in Buxton. It's where the island goes from the east facing side to the south facing side and they meet where the Gulf Stream and the Labrador currents collide offshore. That's what forms the island the way it is. And what makes it break? Can't really let you know those details, but I can say that it is all dependent on the way the sand is shaped. So right now, if the perfect swell came in, there's no sand out there. Not like there was years ago. So it's, it's like probably one of the most fickle spots on the coast for being like good. Woodrow said, how does it feel to be sponsored by the best company, O'Neill? <laughs> gotta say that feels pretty good. I've been with them since I was 11 years old. I've made friends with everyone there and it's like a family now that I've, I've been around so long and it just is, it feels like an honor to be part of the O'Neill team and getting to be part of the Jack O'Neill legacy is just like huge for me, especially because I surf in a wetsuit most of the year. Bonzi Films asked, how do you not get tired of filming and editing? Because when I surf, the last thing on my mind is capturing the moment. Well, one, it's my job, so I kind of have to, but there's a lot of times where the night before a swell, I'm at my computer and I'm like, okay, I gotta charge my camera, I gotta charge my GoPros, I gotta charge my drone, I gotta do all these things that I don't wanna do. I just wanna wrap up the day, go to bed, wake up and go surf. And it does get hard. You know, there's sometimes I don't film as much during the day, but in, in other swells where I'm like excited to film it all, but uh, I just keep pushing through and you know, those times of being burnt out fade away and you get into times where you're psyched and I don't know, I, ju I just love doing it too. Like I love having GoPro footage to look at afterwards, the fact. Like I'll go back in my old hard drives and, and reminisce. So that's what makes me always pull it out and keep filming. All right, how are we doing? I think we're nearing 20 minutes. We're probably over 20 minutes, let's be honest. I talk long and these were a lot of questions. It was like 160 questions or something. So let's try and bang out these last ones and uh, finish this thing off strong. Jason Hines, why is your right eyebrow so much different than your left? Thanks for noticing, Jason. I don't know. I asked my mom that when I was little. I thought I hit my head, because I did hit my head on a rock when I was younger. I had to get like a butterfly band-aid somewhere. She said that that's always been there though. Jelly J 51 what do you prefer, backside or frontside barrel? Ooh, it's hard to beat driving on your forehand through a frontside barrel, but it, you also can't really beat that butt stall feeling or going no-handed backside. So if you can't beat both, where does that leave you? I guess if I had to pick one direction to head the rest of my life, it'd probably be front side. J.A. something said, what inspires you? Do you believe people can change? What inspires, wow, these are, that one's deep. That's, a, that's like a, a video in itself. People can change 100%. I mean, there's obviously like drug dealers and murderers who have gotten saved and know the Lord now and don't walk that way. And yeah, I mean, people can change. That's. 100% possible. No, anyone that says they can't change or anyone that thinks people can't change is living in, you know, just ignorance. Uh, what inspires me? I guess just like people that work hard, people that like go after even little things. It doesn't even have to be like when my wife is just like taking care of our kids and making sure there's food on the table and that the kids get taught their homeschool lessons and they get outside and are interactive with friends and stuff. Not right now, but like you know, prior to COVID-19. I'm inspired by her and her desire to make sure our kids are, and family are taken care of. Or when I watch people and the way that they edit things and shoot things, I'm inspired by their creativity. I mean, you know, the way someone surfs a wave, 
can inspire me to look at waves differently. So what inspires me is just all dependent on my surroundings, I guess. Kai Summers 2005 asks, how are you dealing with the coronavirus? We're hanging in there. Can't say it's awesome, but you know, the beaches are open and we can still go outside and see friends at a distance and get in the water, breathe that salty air. So there, you know, no complaints so far for, for our situation. It's seeing it affect family and friends, especially everyone here whose businesses rely on tourism, that hurts, that hurts. Jackson, <laughs> have you ever surfed down in New Smyrna Beach? Oh yeah, I used to come down there every year for the Scholastics Championships. I always liked surfing in New Smyrna. Waves are fun, good little town, pretty rad spot. Tyler said, tips for backside barrels. Well, Tyler, I have a whole video on barrel riding. You'll just have to check that one out. It's one, in one of my tutorial playlists. Bauer Steven said, I'd love to hear how your religious views affect your family and professional life. I don't really know any other way uh, because I've known the Lord since I was 12. I mean, I guess my desire is to like not be selfless. Sorry, my desire is to not be selfish and, you know, serve people, serve my family, serve my wife, serve my kids. I think that bleeds over into my professional life, my job and filming and like making these videos. Like my desire is for you guys to be psyched and stoked and like amped on whatever I'm doing. Like if I put out all these videos and no one was commenting, how pumped they were, or how it like got them through that week, or you know, really just made them feel good to see it, something besides negativity online, then I wouldn't care to do it. Like, I don't care to like show off what I'm doing. I just wanna do it because people enjoy it. So, I don't know, deep. We, we need to have a full conversation about that, not, not a quick Q and A. Anyway, Ian says, how often do you get those easier small barrel days in Hatteras? Can be often, sometimes we go through periods where all the sandbars aren't good and those little days are just end up being bad. But when the sandbars are right, they kind of pop up here and there quite a bit. Sam use, Sam, 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 three worst fears and favorite travel destination. Ooh, three worst fears, spiders, heights. I'm afraid of heights and deep water. I don't like swimming in deep water, <laughs> as funny as that sounds. Favorite travel destination? Namibia, 100%. Yeah! <laughs> oh my gosh! Arthur asked, what's your height and weight? 5'9", 163. Ruddy Photo said, did they shut the bridges down going on and off the banks? Yes, if you don't reside here, full-time residence, you cannot come to the Outer Banks right now. Kristen Higgins said, how have the waves been at the lighthouse and how is it at Frisco Pier? Honestly, the weather pattern we're in right now, the lighthouse has been breaking quite a bit and it's been a breath of fresh air. I have not been over to Frisco. I don't really ever surf over there, honestly. Fat Grass Surfer, bringing the sub squatch out to do transfers, you in? 100%, let's do it. Stephen Ward's photo, have you ever surfed the Southern OBX? Oh uh, yeah, there's some spots I've been down there. One spot that doesn't exist anymore, but for fear of naming it and it coming back. I won't, but uh, yeah, some special waves down there. They're just fickle, more fickle than here. Tron Davis, trout fishing or drum fishing? Drum fishing, 100%. When you can sight fish a 27 inch drum swimming in skinny water, oh my gosh, it's so good. It's my favorite. All right, Mason, cast right in front of me. Cast right in front of me, hurry, hurry, hurry. Right, real, 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 real. Jerk it a little, jerk it a little. Drop it, drop it, jerk it, jerk it, jerk it, jerk it. Rio, you got him, you got him, you got him. Yeah, yeah buddy, yeah, buddy. Chris Rogers, favorite non-surf or sport-related YouTube channel? Ooh, that's tough. Probably Daniel Schiffer, because I just love watching his handheld B-roll stuff and, and the way he speaks, he's so calm. What's your favorite single clip of yourself right now? Chris, that's a tough one. Favorite single clip of myself? Probably this. Oh. Oh.
Chris Rogers again, what's the one dream shot you want to get of yourself that you haven't got yet? I would say a water video angle of me at the lighthouse shot from a jet ski of a wave coming off the jetty that's just this crazy below sea level one and you're just shooting straight into it. I've never got that. I've always wanted that video angle or photo. I don't really have a good photo of it either. Maybe one day, but that day seems more distant now than ever. <laughs> Jeff0702 says, what's your favorite surf moment with your kids? Shoot, anytime I get in the water with them, they get so psyched I'm going surfing. I haven't really had a time where it was like the best. They're all just the best. <laughs> Midget78 asked, what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? What do you mean, African or European? Takashi says, how do you get stoked before you go out? Well, usually listen to punk rock music or whatever music I'm amped on at the time. I'll just blare it as I'm changing or driving to the spot and get all psyched. Riven Rock says, when did you start surfing? When I was five, I got my sur first surfboard, but I started surfing on like standing up on boogie boards and stuff prior to that. So basically been doing it my whole life. Matthew says, when's there gonna be waves again? Uh, probably in like a couple days, the way things have been going. <laughs> We've had so much swell lately and it doesn't look like it's gonna stop, but it depends on where you are. Grayson says, best consistent surf spot on the East Coast? Best spot and consistent, eh, different. Here or New Smyrna Beach are the two most consistent spots on the East Coast, 100%. Nick Casey says, favorite break in SoCal? Well, I don't know what your technical definition of SoCal is, and I've been taken to a couple waves that are a little more off the radar, so for fear of like upsetting anyone, I'm gonna just, not answer that. Milkshake breakfast. Was Jesus a good surfer? Well, don't think surfboards existed back then, but considering he can walk on water, I guess he was technically surfing before any of us. Hmm. So was he the original? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's a fun question. And J-Man, how do you pig dog drop knee backside and then stand up again on heavy rides? Well, I got a tutorial for that. You know, I noticed that Brad Van Hannigan, Jack, and Chris all had questions about barrels as well. So you guys, just everyone, anyone that's got questions on tubes, I've got a tutorial on how to take off late and general barrel riding answers. So check those out in the tutorial playlist on my YouTube page. Eben, or Eben, 1975 wants to know how the grocery store situation is down here. Well, we're doing pretty well. We are restocked for the most part. There's some things that are out, but yeah, I mean, not as bad as some other places just because our population isn't but so big and everyone's being pretty rational around here for the most part. Tanner wants to know what's a fun board to catch the messy thigh high stuff we get a lot on the East Coast. And what's your favorite saltwater fish to eat? Maybe a recipe. Ooh, recipe. Now we're getting deep. Uh, I think I'm gonna do a video on that with Smith here coming up soon, so stay tuned. Best board for fun, messy thigh high waves, the fling. It is just the most fun you're gonna have on a surfboard all summer. Superband came out with it years ago and they you know, keep refining it and it's just so versatile and makes the worst surf there is the best. Baird wants to know what my technique is when falling in a barrel. Do I tend to dive forward, fall backwards, or kick the board out in front of me? Depends on the situation. I rarely try to kick it out in front of me because a lot of times you're kicking it out to the heavier part of the wave and it'll break. So if I'm going fast, I'll dive forward. If I'm going slow, I'll jump, like just kind of jump forward and pencil dive. And it just depends on how big the wave is, how shallow it is, how in, in the speed I'm going. So it's kind of dependent. Robert D said, when did I start surfing and what board do you like to ride? Started surfing when I was five years old and the boards I like to ride the most would probably be the blackout model, which super doesn't um, make on the racks anymore as of 2020. <clears throat> but I've been riding all the ones from 2019 and prior. And the Pig Dog Pro. Pig Dog Pro is my go-to barrel board. If I'm pulling that thing out, it's gonna be a good day. And then the Super Brand Fling for the summertime. So kind of everything for the whole year. 
Bodex POV wrote me in French and I can't read French, so I'd used Google Translator, but it only got me so far. It says, I live in France, I support you. I don't know what else it said because Google didn't uh, pull through, but thank you for tuning in from France. That means a lot to me. Miles King, are you interested in surfing Lake Michigan? I would love to come surf the Great Lakes someday. It's just a matter of making it happen. Thanks for the invite though. Finlay Cameron said, how would you evaluate your own career as a professional surfer? From the outside, it'd seem you're living the dream, fishing, surfing, etc. but I know you can't judge a book by its cover. Would you want to move on to another career in the future? Maybe video editing? Well, I kind of answered this earlier, but uh, this is a little different. I, I don't want to move on to another career. I already do a ton of video editing, so there's no sense in like stepping away from surfing to just do more video editing. It's pretty cool what I get to do traveling and surfing and documenting. And I just love this, you know, community that we're building here online. And I'd hate to ever, you know, leave that. It is hard. It definitely isn't exactly how it looks from the outside. You know, if I gather up some fishing footage from like one hour, but I worked the rest of that week, you know, it makes it look like I, you guys are only seeing snippets of my life. And I spend a lot of time behind the computer and a lot of time driving in the car and looking at waves more so than I do actually riding them because I'm trying to find the best spots. And I, you know, sometimes my late hours and my long days, I don't know, a, a nine to five, there's times where I'm like, man, a nine to five wouldn't be bad. But then I slap myself and I'm like, dude, you got a dream job. <laughs> So you kind of just go through those phases of questioning like w whether you want to change what you're doing or not. And I love what I do, so I couldn't imagine doing anything else currently. Alex asks, favorite shore break spot? Mm, can't disclose that. It is here on Hatter's Island though. And it only is set up sometimes, so I guess it isn't always there. But anyway, can't tell you where, sorry. Dave M said, worst injury and favorite ice cream flavor. Favorite ice cream, cream flavor would be either Ben and Jerry's milk and cookies or haagen white chocolate raspberry truffle. Two exceptional flavors, two different sides of the spectrum. Worst injury would be my MCL last year, that small tear I had, kept me out of the water for about eight weeks, but very minor and I'm very fortunate that that was the worst thing that's ever happened injury-wise. Caden Taylor says, love how your videos are edited. What kind of MacBook Pro you use? Well, we got ourselves here at 2019. This one came out in November. It is the latest and greatest model. It is souped up to the max other than the hard drive. And yeah, it's been uh, going a whole lot better than my stuff was before. Before it was taking me hours to do simple tasks because it was so slow. And now my workflow is a lot faster and it you know, cost me to make that investment, but it has paid off because I'm getting videos out on time or, or more content, so I'm stoked. Jason asked, I'm curious what you would choose if you had a few days to live and you could only surf one break before you die, which would it be? Please exclude OBX. Let's be honest, if I was about to die, surfing wouldn't even be on my brain. I could care less. I just want to be with my family and stuff. But if we're talking hypotheticals and I have to pick a wave to surf on the last few days I die, it'd probably just be like an all time firing Namibia day. I'd be actually, oh, well you said I have to exclude the OBX. Yeah, it'd be an all time firing Namibia day. And Mohammed says, hope you're well and healthy. Just wondering if you wear earplugs to surf. No, I don't. The water and winds are cold. There's a risk of developing exitosis in the ear canal, or you may have faith in the hoodie. Well, I used to always have faith in the hoodie, but this year is pretty much closed up. And I wear a hood, like I put it on before everyone and I take it off after everyone, every year. I think we deal with a lot of wind from the Southwest and Northeast. And even in the months where it isn't that cold and I'm not wearing a hood, it just blows so much, so. Yeah, mine's pretty bad. I should wear earplugs, I just haven't like, I haven't been responsible with that yet. All right, we're coming down to the round out questions. These are some questions that every, like a handful of people asked about. So, from Beach Tommy and Fefin Chi, they said, if you had to move and live in a new state, where would you go? Well, I'd go to Hawaii because there's good waves, good fishing, great climate. I couldn't, it'd be hard to leave the East Coast, but I don't really see myself living anywhere else on the East Coast. I kind of like the way the North Shore life is, kind of slow, quiet. So probably Hawaii, plus my family loves it. Favorite surf spot? Marty McFly, Ibrahim, and Finn all asked. I would have to say home. 
There's nowhere I'd rather be besides home. Surfing the lighthouse on a good day with my best friends. Can't beat it. Max Haynes, Boris, and Amit asked, fear in big waves. What do you do to stay calm in a wipeout? Well, <clears throat> as far as overcoming fear and pushing yourself in big waves, it's all just about being comfortable. And so you go out in waves that you're kind of comfortable in, but then when that set wave comes that you're uncomfortable with, you push yourself. And then you, you take the next step to go out when it's a little bigger and kind of grow. You don't want to just throw yourself out into situations you're not prepared for. So always be prepared and then just mentally like calm yourself down when you wipe out or even when you're just out on the big day. It's all about relaxing. So when a wave is bearing down on me, I just like, Take those breaths, get a deep breath and just go limp. And you go limp and let it roll you. You want it to push you in so that you get out of the impact zone. And the more relaxed you are, the more oxygen you have. And you know, the more you do all that, you'll get comfortable and, and grow and, and lo not lose the fear, but you just learn to push through it. It's not that the fear goes away. Cooper Shank and Antonia asked what my worst wipeout was. Well, when I was 18, fell on a wave at Pipeline, hit my head on the bottom, blacked out underwater, and honestly was seeing a field of green grass and blue skies and had no idea where I was or what was going on, because if any of us are seeing those things, we're like, why are we here? And then my feet hit the bottom. I all came to, pushed up, almost took a wave on the head, board was broke, took my leash off, which was a bad idea. Swam under the wave and was okay. Lifeguards checked on me. Didn't have a concussion, but I was pretty beat up. And uh, yeah, I still have that board and I just rode on it, God loves you, and put it away in my shed. And it's a reminder that I was almost gone. It's pretty crazy. So I'm getting a helmet before Hawaii this year. I'm over all that stuff. That was when I was 18, but it's happened to so many of my friends in the last like four years that we just need to stop. People need to just start wearing helmets. Helmets are cool. Living is cool. Notorious Ben and Will Bulldozer want to know what training I do to stay fit out of the water. In all honesty, I kind of struggle with that. I spend a lot, so much time at the computer that the little moments that I have where I'm not working, I just want to go fish and hang out with my family and I don't fill them with workouts. And I pay for it because then when there's waves again, I feel out of shape. But typically if it's consistent here, I'm just surfing a ton and staying in shape. So it, it kind of goes through phases though. And I should be more uh, disciplined in that. And the final question to wrap up this whole video was from Nathan. Do I have a relationship with God? Which the answer is yes. Proud Kook and Jason followed that up with, how and when did you become a Christian? Well. When I was younger, I hung out with some friends and we'd always skate at one of our buddies' houses. And when I was about 11 years old, I think, <clears throat> we were skating and Christian surfers started meeting there on Saturdays. And we were like, well, they would, they would like meet in his driveway and bring pizzas and stuff. And it was like, well, we wanted to keep skating, but we didn't want to leave. So we'd hang out through it and then skate afterwards. And that kept going on and eventually, you know, I just, was like hearing all these stories about Jesus and, and the Lord and lo the way they loved me. And, you know, I don't remember, but so much cause I was 12, but I just remember being like, that's so amazing. Like that's real. Like I want that. And uh, I accepted Jesus into my heart when I was 12. And then there were some things that happened that I'm still not comfortable with talking about in public, but some things happened when I was 14, situations I was in that were pretty uh, sketchy. And I was just praying because I was just so fearful of what might happen. And uh, while I was praying, like it was just all of a sudden, everything crazy that was going on in that moment just stopped. And it was like nothing had ever happened. And uh, there was no explanation for it besides the Lord. And ever since then, there's, there's nothing anyone can do to convince me otherwise because I experienced it. I saw it. And, uh, yeah, God's real. And I saw that through two years of praying for whether I was supposed to be in a relationship with my wife or not. And then finally felt led to talk to her. And then after a year of that, um, she finally felt led from the Lord that like I was the one and it all came in his right timing, even though it was kind of painful for me. And um, yeah, we started dating and got married a year later. and. Then like, I never wanted to have kids until I was older. 
and through prayer and just guidance from the Lord, like we had our son when I was 22 and our daughter when I was 25 and they're the best things I ever did, decisions I ever made besides, you know, giving my heart to Christ. And they're things I would have never done out of selfish ambition. But knowing that the Lord's will for my life is greater than anything I can dream of and, and handing that over them, to him, things have been revealed to me that would have never happened before. And I wouldn't be where I am now if it wasn't for the Lord. And there's so many other things, but yeah, now more than ever, if you've ever had questions about Jesus, now's the time to just start praying and look to him for guidance because this crazy world we're in is only going to keep getting crazier and you're not going to find comfort or peace or wisdom that doesn't change here on earth. But in Christ, he's never changes. He never changes. He's always there to comfort you. And uh, that's what's gotten me through a lot. So anyway, is that it? That's it. We did it, you guys. Well, y'all, I'm not even gonna sit here and wrap all that up because this is probably like a 40 minute video or more at this point. But that was like 180 questions. Been filming this for an hour. So I got a lot of editing to do. Hope you guys are having a good one. I'm gonna get back to my normal video routine. So stay tuned because there's been a couple days of waves. Got a couple rad videos coming. Stay healthy, people. Keep your distance from others. Continue social distancing. Get outside and get fresh air. Vitamin D if you can. Just keep operating. Like, don't break the law to go surf. Don't break the law to go outside and go fish or whatever, like I'm saying. I'm only saying these things for those who have the freedom to do so. And if you don't, I'm praying for you guys. And uh, we will get through this. So. Until then, y'all have a good one. Stay positive, and I'll see y'all next time. I can't. I always hit the lens right here. I can't, because can't reach it. Go on now. Whew. That was crazy. I wonder if anyone's even gonna watch all that. <sighs> Hope so. These West draws are good. I wish to be, I wish to be me